Yep. And like I said, you know, government uses other people's money to pay for other things for other people, and th uh, that's not the best way to do it. Well, it, you know, the other thing I, I'm listening to Tito, and I guess the other thing I want to make clear is that it really isn't magic. It doesn't and shouldn't take this level of, of mm -hmm. training and background to figure these things out. You have a house, you have a budget, you figure it out. If you only have $100 for groceries, you don't so buy steak, steak, you buy ramen <laughs> okay. noodles. It's okay. not complicated. All right. You it yeah. Really, you boil it down to the bottom line, you figure out what you have, and you get the most for it. That's what you do. That's what Marissa does at her business. That's what everybody does See? when they're at home. That's why they get other jobs. If it wasn't worth you, I mean, if you're going to go to work and make $9 an hour and spend $10 an hour on babysitting, you're not going to do it. It's not magic. It's just hidden. So while no one's pointing fingers at anyone else here, it sure seems that people outside this building has a very different image of how we perceive ourselves. What brings right. us together sure. is I want to bring up the Leeward Bikeway. You guys with me on that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Leeward Bikeway, 1999, legislature appropriates $4 million. 1999. Says 1999. Okay. This, is right. a, this is a 18-mile stretch that goes from Nanakuli to Waipio Point Access Road in Waipahu. Okay. Then we connect to the His Pearl Harbor Historic Trail, take it to all the way to the stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we have people who, who, when the federal government turned it over to the state in the 1970s, it was the O-R-N-L right away. You guys were on the historic of a train ride yeah, on July 4th, so you went down that O-R-N-L right of way. That's where the bikeway is to be. So that has always lapsed. So our leaders, I, I know Senator Gabbard has served on ample policy. I know uh, Senator Sparrow's always been on it since he's been in office. Last 10 years he's been on the ample. Right. They've voted to delay this bikeway, something that is land given to the state and the projects of prioritization are going outside of Eva Beach, Whoa. not to Eva Beach. So Whoa. I want to hear you guys talk about this connectivity. Of, you got families, do you guys, would right. you use that bikeway? Right, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I have three daughters, uh, you know, two of them are old enough to ride bikes. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think it would be a great means to, uh, to travel up and down uh, through uh, Eva Beach and Kapolei. Uh, I think it'd be a great idea. Uh, but the thing that, that strikes me the most is, um, you know, I would have to ask Senator Sparrow, you know, why is this being delayed? You know, why, where, would that, where did that money go that was supposed to go to the Leeward Bikeway? What other project did that go to? Mm -hmm. And why all of a sudden was that a priority over Ever Beach? Right. I mean, that's, that's the question I would ask. Well, it's just first to the premise is you have to be fighting for Ever Beach. True. So you have to assume that's taking place. True. Well, and I'll say something, you know, Marissa and I are up in, we're in Kapolei. So it's unlikely we would be riding that bicycle okay. trail. However, the mentality is the same. The mentality is the same. We're looking out here, Eva, Kapole, right, it's up into Makakila. We're looking at having the second city. We've all heard that thrown around, right? Yeah. But you know what that means? Do you know what that means? That means jobs here. That means we're not driving out. That means lots of good things for the people who are living here. You know what else it means? It means a threat for people who don't live here. A threat for the people whose power and money is elsewhere. And you want to know why we're being delayed, really? It's, again, not that complicated. Where did the money go? Mm -hmm. The feds only gave us $140 million a year for our entire state's roads. Right. The North-South Road, Kualakai Parkway, cost $162 million. And that was only to build half of it. Right. Because back in 2000, the whole project was $130 million to build six lanes, the whole, mm -hmm. the whole thing. So over time, Governor Lingle, Fort Weaver Road, same, same condition. Here's what the governor's been faced with. All the other states can say, a bikeway, $8 million, we'll just build it. We don't have to wait for the feds to give us these matching funds. That's, Go ahead that's, and put it on. That's the problem with our growth in the Eva, in the Eva Plain together, right. is, is that we're waiting for federal dollars that just aren't there. There's not enough to meet what we need. Therefore, we're going to do two things, delay that. and wait. And that's another danger of government here in Hawaii is having to rely on federal dollars. Uh, how much longer is the state going to go ahead and do that? So that, that's a question for another time. Yeah, and there's another thing. You know, I, Fort Weaver Road, I watched something happen there that's really, it's a very small example, but it's a good example of what the government does and why we need to have people looking at it. They're working on the construction, and there's that rail, there's the rail that goes across there. And so for years... We're driving over these rails, and they're constructing this road. And they went through and built this entire road so that the rails are still there, right? We finally get the lanes open so that people can actually get to Eva Beach and back, yeah. right? And one month later, they close it down, 
so they can tear those rails up and repave it. Really? Why didn't we, before we finished the road, tear the rails up yep. and do it once? Instead, we did it twice. Minutes. How many people, and including me, were putting up with squeeze traffic in and out for how many years so that they could deal with that one little piece of road that anybody with a little bit of foresight and a little bit of planning could have said, wow, if we're not going to keep that rail anyway, why are we going to first build a crossing and then remove the crossing and then rebuild the road? Hmm. That's what happens when government is in charge of a project. And right. that's why it's so wonderful that all of you are here from the private sector and have these amazing backgrounds that can, can say, hey, people of Hawaii, it's time for us to have real discussion on these issues. It's time to start believing that government perhaps is not the answer. Maybe government is the problem. And so that's kind of an, uh, many different stories I've been getting from private contractors now who have been brave and have come forward to tell me about how government's been handling some of the contracts that they've been given. For example, we have several contractors that live in, in Eva Beach and, 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 and Kapolei as well. And one particular came to me and said, Kim, I just finished redoing one of the roofs of your schools. And I gotta tell you, I didn't have to redo it. It was <sighs> fine. Wow. And I when I got the and I was happy for the contract and to employ people, but I went back to the, the Department of Education because I knew that was my money and my kids' money and my neighbors' money. And I said, you know, we don't have to redo this, thanks for the contract, but it looks like you guys just redid it like a couple of years ago. And then he said, Well, the person that was my contact in the DOE says, well, the computer says that it's time to, to fix the oh roof. My. And that was a multi-million dollar project. The computer says. And it. so it's very obvious, at least within the Department of Education, that things have gotten so big that these poor workers are put up with all of these different ways of doing things and don't even make sense to the point where you have that worker saying, the computer said it. You know, I'm sure some legislator down the line had this great idea to come up with a computer system to tell people what to do. And uh, probably some good workers said, no, that's not a good plan, but that was the legislator's idea, so they had to pass it. So it's very good that you folks are talking about these, right, these things right now. Rep Pine, isn't it interesting how uh, when we speak to people who work in the government, in one of two types, you either find the one who has 85 projects, has to work 60-hour uh, weeks, uh, can't see his family, or you have the other guys who really don't have much to do, not really sure what they're supposed to do, what their objective of their department is, uh, and then they kind of stand around and, and, and really it's, it's not satisfying work for either party, mm -hmm. and uh, that's mm -hmm. got to change. That's just bad government, and, okay. and so we're really hoping to change that, and I think all of you have shown that we have a lot of intelligence on the west side of the island. Mm -hmm. There is a better way. <laughs> there is a better way. But that's our show uh, for Eva today. I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, as you can see, we have bright minds here out on the West Coast and from Kapolei to, to the Eva Plain and Makakilo. And we will see a lot more of these great leaders who have decided to uh, put themselves forth to help bring change to the Leeward Coast. I am Representative Kimberly Pine, and I want to thank Tito, Marissa, Aaron, and Tom for joining us for Eva hey. today. Mahalo so much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom.